What's going on everybody? In this video, I just wanted to take some time to talk about someone who I think is super underrated and has actually had two very good seasons of competitive Madden over the past two years, and that is Killer Mike. Now, real quick shout out to Eric Davis for giving me the idea, and he also said that he thinks Killer Mike's underrated, and I think a lot of people would agree with that statement because when you think of Killer Mike, he doesn't have that, you know, high powered offense like a Skimbo or a Ghost or that, you know, formidable defense like someone like Problem. But he just gets the job done. He's very disciplined and he takes advantage of, you know, the openings that his opponent gives him. So I just wanted to kind of take some time and go over a few examples of him doing just that. Now, so for this first example, we're going to go all the way back to the Seahawks Club Series championship game against Young Kiv. And now for some context here, Kiv had been running a lot of will go three fire, which was a three deep style of blitz. He had run it nine times up to this point. Now he had called OLB strike two twice, and he had called those two play calls on a third and fourth down situation. So odds are, you know, there's a chance that Kiv could be in that OLB strike two right here uh, because he had shown the tendency to want to call it in crucial down and distance situations. However, right here, Mike comes out gun bunch, bunch to the left, and that small movement right there, you see Kiv takes his strong safety and he brings him to the middle. This is a dead giveaway that Kiv is not in a two deep shell at all. Kiv is definitely now in a three deep shell. Now, what does this mean for Mike? Now, Mike knows, okay, Kiv's in a three deep shell. It's going to look something like, something like this, probably. Now, there's nobody on the right side of the field that can take away that out route by DeAndre Hopkins. Uh, the only way would be if Kiv went ahead and hot routed, you know, this outside cornerback to basically take him out, his, out of his deep third on the right, which is very aggressive, and put him in either a cloud flat or, say, like a curl flat to try and stop that out route. Because a lot of people do go with smart routed out routes and in routes on these fourth and long situations. However, why that would be dangerous is because up to this point, Mike had been very aggressive attacking downfield and trying to get behind Kiv's cover three style of defense. So it's a kind of a catch 22 for Kiv. If I put him in a cloud flat, it's like a 50 50. Put him in a cloud flat and he's on a fade, it's an automatic touchdown. If I leave him in a deep third and Mike goes with the smart routed out route, you know, he probably converts, but it's probably not a touchdown. Right here, uh, what you're going to see, obviously, Kiv pulls that defender all the way to the middle. So Mike now knows I don't have to worry about anybody on the outside out there. Immediately puts DeAndre Hopkins on that out route, as you can see right there. Snap of the ball, and Kiv didn't go with the cloud flat. Kiv stayed with the deep third on the right side, and you're going to see Mike deliver the ball on the cut. Kiv's defender actually tries to make a play on the ball and is way late, and that allows Mike to get around the edge with DeAndre Hopkins, and that leads to a 34-yard touchdown. Just from that small movement of Kiv's safety to the middle of the field, which gave Mike information as to what defense Kiv was running, which resulted in, oh, I can just put this guy on an out route. Kiv has nobody in the area allocated to defend this part of the field. Now right here, this next example is going to come from his first round matchup against Volterax in the club championship. And this is going to be another example of him just taking advantage of what the defense gives him. Now, backstory on this, Volt up to this point had been running a lot of, you see, nickel normal, either nickel blitz two or just a standard cover six. Now what you're going to see is Volt brings his safety up and widens him out really far. So these, that you just saw him bring up his free safety, his strong safety is out here. So it would be really weird if this was a cover six and the two guys on the outside and these were two deep quarter zones stacked so closely together. So Mike can probably deduce, okay, this is most likely going to be a Tampa two or a two deep shell style coverage where, you know, the middle linebacker drops deep and has that deep middle assignment, which is a popular concept this year. However, the caveat is that when Volt was running that nickel blitz too, he was blitzing six. He would blitz this linebacker, this cornerback, along with his four linemen. So that would leave a two deep, you know, three under style of shell where the two deep zones were the free safeties and the deep halves. And then the other two underneath defenders were the flat zones. So Volt would have the entire middle of the field to his user. And in this case, Volt, you have to know in this scenario that you need to get depth and you need to get deep. There's no way your safeties are going to get back in time and make a play. Mike realizes this, goes with a PA read that has a skinny post running from that Chris Carter spot. Volt freezes at the line of scrimmage. D see how he doesn't move? He needs to bail immediately. At this point, Chris Carter's already behind his defender. Volt realizes it, gets caught up in the traffic. He wasn't going to make it back there anyway. And Killer Mike walks into the end zone for a free 
30-yard touchdown. So just another scenario of knowing your opponent's play calling, looking at their pre-snap set, set up and saying, okay, this is weird. Uh, if his play calling stays on course, then there's no way any defender will be in position to make a play on a route attacking this part of the field. Now going back to the championship matchup against Young Kiv for this final example, and this is just another scenario of Kiv telegraphing his defensive setup. You see the safety stack in the middle, and you know, okay, this is definitely going to be a three-deep shell. You're not in a two-deep shell, and so you're going to have this outside cornerback trying to drop back in that deep third on the left part of the field, and we all know up to this point in the year that those deep thirds on the outside don't get the depth immediately. They let the receivers run by them, essentially. They start backpedaling rather than instantly bailing. And Mike realizes this, and he's going to go uh, with a bomb to Jerry Rice here. And what you're going to see, he actually goes with bunch trail. And with the backside post, Jerry Rice already was behind that defender. As you can see, when he snaps the ball, notice how the deep third on the outside, notice how he's still backpedaling right now on the outside right there. How he's not even turned and running towards Jerry Rice. That's what allows these, you know, deep thirds and deep quarter zones to get bombed this year. Is they don't immediately start running with the receiver. And the middle, the middle zone defender actually sees it and is running with it. He probably can't catch up anyway, but you're going to see right here. Notice how he initially shifts his attention because the deep post is attacking on the other side. So he turns and starts running uh, towards the deep post, and that just allows Jerry Rice to get even more open behind uh, Kiv's zone defenders. And unfortunately for Mike, he gets a rat catch where Jerry Rice stumbles and he falls down at the 8-yard line. But still a huge play in the game towards the end of the half that allowed him to put points up on the board and take a nice two possession lead into the half over Young Kiv in that Seahawks Club Series final. But that's going to be it for this video, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed. Like I said, Killer Mike, criminally underrated in my opinion. Two great years of competitive Madden. So I'm excited to see him hopefully back for a third next year. As always, thank you so much for watching, guys. And until next time, take it easy.